What is junk DNA? Well, firstly, DNA, or to be more specific, deoxyribonucleic acid, is a molecule that forms the blueprint for almost all of life. Now, DNA's primary function is to code for proteins. DNA first gets transcribed into its molecular cousin, mRNA, which is then translated into proteins. Now, quick fact, only about 1.5% of our DNA actually codes for proteins. The rest is called junk DNA. Or to not hurt his feelings, we could go ahead and call it non-coding DNA. But wait a second, why exactly was non-coding DNA called junk in the first place? Turns out that researchers found elements of our DNA called transposons or selfish genes copying and pasting themselves throughout our genome only to increase their chance of survival, hence the name junk. But recent research has shown that non-coding DNA is far from junk. From assisting transcription to regulating translation, it does it all. In fact, some of our non-coding DNA does get transcribed into RNA called functional non-coding RNA but doesn't get translated into proteins. Some of this RNA assists protein synthesis while others even destroy some other RNA. Our non-coding DNA also acts as a volume knob for gene expression, regulating which gene is expressed in which cell and by how much. This gives different cells in our body the ability to perform different functions. Proteins which initiate, enhance or even repress transcription attach to non-coding regions of DNA and not the coding ones. Well, this stuff is okay, but our non-coding DNA has done some way cooler stuff in the past. Ever wondered why we don't look like apes? Well, the credit could possibly go to our non-coding DNA. Researchers found that duplication of a certain segment of our non-coding DNA called SRGAP2 could have led to the development of a larger prefrontal cortex as well as better synapses in humans. Pretty cool, right? Research has also shown that studying non-coding DNA has far-reaching applications in medicine. A certain non-coding DNA segment called MSR1 is closely related to both breast and prostate cancer, and people having short MSR1 tails were found to have a higher probability of being diagnosed with cancer. In the future, doctors could probably examine the sequence and screen people with short MSR1 tails more often to catch cancer early. Also, new methods of diagnosing autism, schizophrenia, and several other neuropsychiatric disorders could be developed with further study of non-coding DNA. Now, non-coding DNA isn't even close to being 100% useful, but I would say it is far from junk. Thank you for watching. My name is Jishnu Mangalam.